as we take a look at Tesla, you have that outperform rating and the $1,000 price target. You've talked about this for some time. At this point now, um, delivery numbers are due out today or maybe early next week. Maybe you know better than me, but I know that you're actually talking about some great numbers, maybe even some record numbers, numbers that will beat the whisper numbers. Why are you so optimistic? Yeah, and this is despite the chip shortage, which when you really think about it annually, that's going to take off about 40,000 units for the year. I think it just shows the demand that we're seeing specifically out of China, U.S., as well as parts of Europe, specifically Scandinavia. It's pretty robust in terms of what we're seeing in the quarter. And I think this is a massive trajectory going into Q4, because we think month of call it September, we could be looking at anywhere from 130 to 145,000 units just in the month. And I think this is important because it speaks to our thesis going into next year, despite what we've seen this year in chip shortage, the green tidal wave is going to continue into the next year. Tesla is the way to play a thousand dollar price target. So is this is this the worst of it now? You think the worst has passed? I mean, you're talking about next year and the green wave and more EVs, and you're talking about great demand from Asia, Europe, Scandinavia, et cetera. Um, do you feel like the worst has passed or we still have to navigate through some of this? Yeah, we'll navigate through some choppiness, but in my opinion, the worst has passed in terms of specifically the China headwinds. I mean, if you go back to earlier this year, that was a big issue for Tesla and Musk that they need to navigate. And, and that's important because China, when you look at Giga, that's a linchpin to success. 40% of deliveries going into next year. So there's always going to be bumps in the story, but also you're, you're looking at a company that's now starting to get more profitable from a gross margin perspective, auto gross margins. And I think you put all this together in terms of electric vehicle. I think this is really going to be a turning point. Not just for Tesla, but I think across the sector. And you know, GM will have their analyst day next week. This is the start of a five trillion dollar green tidal wave. Um, you know, we, I'm looking through some of the risks that you discussed here pertaining to Tesla. I mean, there are people who love Elon Musk. They love Tesla. They think it's a great leader. Um, it's shown its leadership. It's outpaced in deliveries more than people expected. So I think it's wowed people enough that it really deserves a lot of respect. At the same time you know, may have liquidity issues, may have some headwinds, um, has competition, right? I mean, you could say Tesla's the established name, but you have U.S. car makers and Asian car makers that are really nipping at Tesla. Um, which of the headwinds concern you most? Is it the capital raise or the competition? I think it's more competition because the company's done a great job in terms of not just capital raises, but also getting in profitability. So I think some of that is, is in the rear view mirror. Look, I think competition has been overhang on the sector, you know, with more and more pure plays, as well as the likes of GM, Ford, VW, and others. You got 100 plus OEMs going after electric vehicle. But, but you, you'll start to see some share clearly diminish for Tesla. But if, if you take a step back, it's only 3% of automotive today at EV. When that goes to 10% by 2025, which is, in our opinion, that's why this continues to be just not just a name, but a massive sector to play really across the whole supply chain. And I think that's going to be see something that we're going to see in terms of a re-rating in the likes of a GM, a re-rating re in the likes of Ford as more and more EV focus. And the street's going to treat them that way. What about, and I want to get to names like Apple and Microsoft. I know you've always liked Apple and talked about some of the channel checks you've done there. But just a final thought when we look at, at Tesla, you know, there's talk about them making their own chips. It's not even clear whether or not they're making their own chips. The battery, are they a battery company or an EV company? When you view Tesla and you view Tesla as a thousand dollar stock, Dan Ives, the guy who's like living, eating and breathing Tesla, what is it? What is Tesla? Is it Elon Musk's vision? Is it all those things? What is it Tesla that's making it $1,000? Well, first off, I mean, if you look at just how innovative and I'd say really years ahead of competition they've been, that's been important because, you know, in, in terms of from an EV perspective, this is a company that should do call 1.3, 1.4 million units next year. But I've never looked at them as an automotive company. I've viewed them as disruptive technology name more and more the software, the recurring piece that they're getting. What's the battery technology that they're innovating within Fremont, within Giga? You know, from a sum of the parts perspective is how I've always viewed Tesla. 
And there you look, you're always going to get haters and Tesla haters and many of these other names. But to, to this point, it's hard now to deny which way this is all heading in terms of electric vehicles going from, we'll call it a few million vehicles worldwide to, and you know, we're talking about the overall electric vehicle industry. I mean, we think you have 50% of vehicles by 2030 being electric vehicle. Mm. Right. And Norway, I mean, it's just that that's what they do there. More than 50 percent. Right. Let's switch gears and move because, you know, tech is always in your in your world. Right. You have your your Ives cloud ETF that we follow. Apple, a name that you said 200 and the, the demand for the iPhone 13 that you say is way more than we anticipate. Um, when you look at tech overall, Apple, Microsoft, those are some of the names you like still. And um, where are those headed? And is there anything else that you want to add in? that you love. Yeah, and, and the 20 bit move in the 10 year doesn't change our thesis, right? I mean, I mean, you've mm, talked about that. I point. view these as opportunities to own the secular winners in tech, whether it's Apple in terms of the super cycle continue to play out with the iPhone 13, tracking anywhere from eight to 10% above expectations of the street, they'll continue to raise numbers. You look at cybersecurity, I think it's a golden age for cybersecurity names like Zscaler, Hannibal, Love Palo Alto, you know, as well as even federal names like Telos. And then you look at overall cloud, with Microsoft continues to be our top pick, along with names like DocuSign, Pegasystems, and others. And, that, and that's why I, I view this as a fourth industrial revolution plan out. And you know, the, we believe that in terms of Tech bull cycle. This is going to continue in 2022, and it's our thesis that this is only really the middle innings of that playing out. Despite exogenous events that we're going to continue to get, but but that just makes us more bullish, not less. Right. And do you think Tesla will bring in record deliveries? Oh yeah, and I think this is. I, I think also it's a little more of a. I wouldn't necessarily call it like a prove me quarter, but if you look at the chip shortage, you look at what we're seeing in China, for them to report a 225, 230K number, where probably just this quarter, 20K deliveries got lost in the chip shortage. I mean, that's, that's just a massively impressive number. I think even the bearers would admit is, uh, is a shock. 